Hi, this is Kerry Artak with Wicked Signal, and today's video was recorded on Tuesday, January 26, 2021. In it, I update you on two stocks that I've analyzed over the last few months, Canopy Growth Corporation and Plug Power. Uh, I could do a lot more updates. I should do a lot more updates. It should be part of my routine, uh, but these are the first two stocks that I'm actually analyzed I'm sorry, that I've actually updated in the last few months. Uh, and I'm going to jump into it in just a second. But first, I would like to ask you to ask your trader or investor friends to please go to wickedsignal.com, fill out that free subscription form at the top of the page, uh, fill out the first name, last name, email address, and you or they will receive a new email each and every time a new video has been released for viewing. I won't fill your email inbox with all kinds of marketing offers, and I will not share your personal contact information with anyone outside of the organization. So let's jump into plug power. Uh, this is a chart that you were sort of left with in that video. This video was put out uh, on November 24th. So it's been, geez, it's been, um, you know, wow, has it really been over two months? It has been over two months. And I was talking about a buy signal that would play out if we were to close above the formation that you see in November at 29.21. In fact, I'm going to just play a segment, about 20 se seconds of that video, just to remind you of what I actually said. You know, so if, by the way, we were to close at the end of any week or in any month above 2921 or wherever that formation is on a month-by-month -month basis, then the 106.68 full channel extension becomes a viable target. Realizable, um, you know, obviously the timing that is difficult. This stock has seen some very volatile moves in its early days. Uh, could it take less than a year, perhaps, and of course, Plug Power did elicit that buy signal. Uh, this is the same monthly chart you saw in the video, really. Uh, let's zoom in a little bit, and you can see that in the week of Monday, December 14th, the market did close above that formation and uh, pause for a few weeks before launching uh, a few weeks later, and off we went. Uh, and so what I'm going to do is just apprise you of uh, the support through April, uh, well below the market. I don't anticipate seeing this anytime soon. 2877, the month of February, 2801, the month of April, and in between those two is the month of March. Uh, and anticipating above this, as I said in the video, that 107, 106 area. Now, given the rate of uh, this rally that we've seen over the last month or two, uh, we could quite easily reach into that area by the end of March or sooner. Uh, and that is an area, as I say, that can contain buying, you know, into later year perhaps, although I hate to fade these ver vertical moves. Uh, this one could continue on and on. And I will update you once again uh, as we approach this area as to what are the consequences if we take it out. Uh, this this stock had a price of over $1,500 at one point. So there's all kinds of upside potential if we push through this area at 107.06 the entire month of February uh, of this year. Let's zoom in a little bit and take a closer look at things. This is a weekly chart. I'm going to zoom in one more time. And uh, you'll see that a couple of weeks ago, a few weeks ago, we had a high of 73.90. This week, the week of Monday, January 25th, uh, we are testing it. We push through it. We have a high of 75.49. If we close the week above 73.90, we actually might reach that 107.06. As you can see, over the next two to three, three to five weeks, possibly by the end of February. So there's that. You know, people are looking for, you know, where's the next buy signal? Well, from what I can tell, uh, just, uh, just merely closing above that 73.90 high would be a sign of strength into later February. Uh, there is no sign of weakness right now. I'm going to just throw out a just a very short-term channel bottom that is only based on that 75.49 high this week, Monday, January 25th. Uh, and so even if we if we push through 75.49, get up to 77, 79, 80, whatever the case might be, this channel bottom at 59.53 would have to be reconstructed. I'm just giving you that heads up. So what may be 59.53 this this week, the week of Monday, January 25th, uh, will be different and could be very different as we continue into February trade, depending on what this stock does. But I'm just giving you an example of where I think this stock is in trouble near term. And that would be a settlement this week, the week of Monday, January 25th, below 59.53 does not appear to be in the cards at this point in time, but you never know. It is a high volatility stock. So closing Friday, what would that be? 
That would be January 29th. Friday, January 29th, below 59.53. At this point in time, that would be a sign of weakness. Would we fall all the way back to 28.77? We might. We just might. Uh, I wouldn't expect it. Uh, but, uh, you know, I'm just saying if we close below 59.53, um, if you're long this stock, I would say consider liquidating some of your position. Um, but until then, uh, all systems go to the upside. Um, this stock still in reach of that 107.06 area over the coming months and I might even say weeks. So let's jump into Canopy Growth Corporation. I put out a video on this uh, the week of, uh, I actually on October 23rd. And in it, I was saying that were we to close the week above that uh, 1967 formation, we would have a sign of bullish continuation into the, uh, you know, the mid 20s, upper 20s, 26, I think I was saying. Uh, in fact, I'll just let you, I'll just let you watch the video segment uh, right now. And then, uh, and then we'll continue on after you take a look at about 15 seconds of that video from October 23rd that point in time but bottom line i'll leave you with this once again uh if we close above 1967 on friday october 23rd anticipating the 26 dollar and change area over the coming month or two and that is really all that needs to be said for this particular uh, video blog and so a few weeks later canopy did actually elicit a buy signal above that channel top on november 2nd rallied actually uh, tested that uh, 25.99 channel top uh, a few weeks later it was in the 26 handle at that point in time um, backed off just a bit for a couple of weeks uh, and then in later november into december uh, chopped around both sides of that formation before convincingly rallying in early january and we've been following through uh, ever since and so um, you know the question obviously begs now what we've actually taken out uh, long-term resistance at this descending channel top. I'll show you these numbers in just a moment. In fact, here we go, 2831 to 2937. That's the week of February 1st. That's actually a week from when I'm actually recording this video because I don't see the market backing off to that area before then. So 2831 is that rising channel top, that former channel top, and 2937 and 2937 is that longer term descending channel top. We're clearly above both of them. That is our base of support now. So rather than just a near term buy signal uh, that occurred in November above that formation that I was mentioning in the video itself, we've now taken out long term resistance. So there's a reason actually I've, I've drawn uh, this sort of uh, saucer bottom that you can see that's played out since uh, the spring really of 2019. We're coming on two years uh, and we're now rounding out to the other side, to the upside. We've taken out long-term resistance, now support in the 2831 to 2937 area. And so I think uh, there's very good reason to consider uh, the likelihood actually of continuation into the upper, I'm sorry, the lower 50s uh, over the next, you know, uh, obviously difficult to ascertain. I'm going to say in as little as two to three months, which would put us, you know, into April, May, perhaps, uh, or it could take into summer trade, depending on what the market does, what this stock does on the way there. But, you know, it oftentimes these saucer uh, bottoms will mimic uh, the opposite side. So you can see how we descended pretty steadily uh, April, May, June, July uh, into the summer of 2019. And so that may actually uh, be what we're experiencing uh, sort of in a mirror fashion uh, symmetrically on the way up. And so I could see a two or three months, three to five months from now uh, into late spring where we actually reach what I consider to be a realistic objective now in the lower 50s. There's lots going on in the lower 50s. First of all, that is sort of where this saucer formation began, this rounding, long-term rounding uh, bottom. And um, you also have the very high settlement, the highest weekly settlement for Canopy is 51.53 back in 2019. And I've actually got an arrow for that. So uh, lower 50s, 51.53 to 52.74 is considered realistic. I'm going to just keep saying three to five month objective above the 28.31 to 29.37 area. And um, I'm going to show you some other numbers. We're going to zoom in here uh, just so you have uh, this data uh, into March trade 
uh, February 1st. That is the week of February 1st. Once again, 2831 to 2937. Um, it is really just that former channel top, the descending channel top. They all come together uh, and then they sort of stay in the upper 20s really all the way into March. So a full month later, the week of March 1st, 2835 to 2909. And, uh, you know, you can you can do the math if you like. I think you can just quite simply just say uh, we've got solid support through February, um, you know, between uh, the 2830s and the very low $29 area. It's kind of like a pick your spot. And so long as we're above it, uh, that long-term saucer bottom remains in effect. And uh, I would expect the lower 50s over the next three to five months. In fact, I can give you the next sort of go with buy signal, the next indication that this stock is likely to continue accelerating to the upside. And that would be a settlement this week, the week of Monday, January 25th. If we close that week, which is Friday the 29th, above 36.58, I see price acceleration then uh, where we could actually reach into the lower 50s within as little as two to three months or less. Uh, so, you know, until then, if you're a near-term trader, um, you know, which is to say, if you trade kind of a two to three week time horizon, you could play both sides of this market if you wanted to. I'm not a big fan of selling a bull move. <laughs> I'm just saying 36.58 is your ceiling. We could top out there uh, through February and back off into the upper 20s. Uh, over that time frame. Uh, and then, of course, a closing above that 36.58 formation. There is nothing to do in this stock but be long or get long because I think uh, the lower 50s then in reach within as little as two to three months. So right now, I haven't done the math. I'm just saying from the uh, upper 20s, you know, you're looking at probably a 40 to 45 percent price gain uh, from the upper 20s. From present price categories, from present price levels, you're looking at a about a 50% uh, uh, rally from where we are. I'm 35, roughly $35 a share into the uh, lower 50s. You know, that's uh, that's about a 50% return right now if you were to just buy this stock. But, you know, um, I would say if you're, if you're not long the stock already, uh, you're going to go long. Uh, and this is just my recommendation. Uh, under one of two scenarios, you're either buying weakness in the upper 20s or you're buying strength with a settlement above 36.58 at the end of this week. Now that is rising. I've given you four weeks as per usual. 30 per usual. 39.90 minus 36.58. Divide that out by four, and you'll have that location of that channel top each and every week in between. And if we settle any Friday above it, and, and by the way, I keep getting these questions, and I probably should just jump in there right now. These these charts do show up on daily graphs, and I think you can actually play these moves on an intro week basis. In other words, that 3658 channel top, were we to settle above it on a Tuesday, and I want to I want to say by at least a one percent margin, which would be about 37 cents higher. Um, you know that will take you uh, to thirty-seven dollars and fifteen cents. I think I'm just doing the math roughly in my head. You should do it on a calculator. So if we close this week thirty-seven fifteen or higher, that's a pretty good go with buy signal. I think then this market could ride uh, that channel top. That channel top would then become support, and uh, that would be a pretty good pullback support between now and whenever we were to reach our fifties. Uh, I know I'm getting deep in the weeds here on how to play this, uh, but I think it's all worth worth expressing uh, so you know kind of where I'm coming from. Um, so once again, I'll just leave this image with you're buying weakness in the upper 20s or you're buying strength with a settlement uh, by at least 1% above that channel top at 36.58. And yes, you can do it on an intra-week basis. You can do it on a Tuesday or a Wednesday. Uh, obviously, you'd want to see the market settle that Friday out also above this formation. And um, I'm kind of backing up here with this image, just showing you uh, the way this 3658 channel top looks. Um, and um, I think I'll just leave you with this, um, this uh, holding above the upper 20s, anticipating the lower 50s now in canopy growth. If we close back below that 2831 area, uh, you know, any week, even any day, uh, by at least a 1% margin, that is an indication you should probably just get out of this stock, call it a day assess, uh, because I think it then has the possibility of falling back into the lower 20s anyway, maybe the upper teens over the months ahead. And that's all I'm going to say for this particular video update on Plug and Canopy.